Hello viewers, today for initial checkout we have an AT&T telephone. This has a dual cassette analog answering machine with the voice date and time stamp. And this is the model 1618 answering system. Made in New Mexico. This is probably a product of the 90s, if you might guess. The power cord, it doesn't specify on the machine anywhere, but it does take the 9 volts AC, not the DC, the AC, which is kind of annoying because these AC adapters that go from AC to AC are kind of rare. We have some switching here on the back. Pulse tone, ring selection, and the left, or rather on the right, we have the volume slider, and on the left side, we have the handset volume and the ringer volume. It's in pretty good condition. It's relatively clean. Classic AT&T handset. There is some writing on the memory dials, but sometimes those they have two sheets in there, so it's possible there's a clean sheet below that one. There's no cassettes in there, but that's fine. I've got two right here. Cord is kind of jacked up. I'll fix that later. All right, let's go ahead and plug this in. And we have an error already. I have not been having good results with these cassette machines lately, which really stinks because I like them a lot. said he's stuck in there. I think it's in read mode or something. Yeah, the head is still up on that one. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that other tape out now. Okay, so how do we get this out of the flashing E state? Do we have a reset button somewhere? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Oops. A freak show, always in the video. Okay, so this doesn't look like it lets me do anything. Okay, I don't want to just force this cassette out of here, but I don't know what else to do because it's. I don't know how I'm going to get that out of there now. <clears throat> if I can't get this to leave that error state and drop the head again. Want that cassette to fall apart. Nope, it's still saying it's got a problem.
it seems to just be ever so slowly progressing forwards in the tape at very, very small increments. This is getting ridiculous. Let's see what it does when it gets to the end of that tape. So I don't want to damage anything here, but I gotta get this tape out of there. I'm not gonna have this eat a, eat a tape. I don't have too many of these tapes left. I'm going to have to figure out how to get that head to go down. I may have to take the whole thing apart just to do that. Now that's cool. The on power cord just went flying off the camera. Okay. So I freed it up. Now let's try again. Did side two before. Maybe I'll try side one. It's going to make any difference, but you never know. Okay. Now I just did a sample of both tapes. Now it's rewinding that one. Okay, that's looking a lot more promising than it was before. It's going to take some time for that to rewind through the whole thing there. I think I had last used these tapes on side two. I don't know why I started on side two, but it didn't seem to like side two very much. Okay, it's almost done with that. Now it's going to rewind the other tape. Now I suspect it's checking for the greeting, but there won't be one because I haven't recorded one yet. Oh, that's the incoming message. I don't know, maybe it's checking for... Oh, either way, it's checking for messages. Probably lessening for that beep tone, but... I don't think there's going to be one on there. Okay, this is getting a little ridiculous here. It says F. So I guess that means it's full. Let's see, does it have uh, any indication of what the errors mean? Uh, I don't know the manual for this, so I'm not exactly sure what the problem is there. Alright, let's see if we can set the clock. So it says set volume to the middle. I recall it saying that on the other one too. I don't know why it does that. I don't think it really matters. Hold down the clock until you hear a day. Sunday. Oh, it's got that voice. I like that voice. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. Saturday. Sunday. Uh, it's not quite the 5600 voice, but it's very similar. Monday. Okay. 1 a.m. 2 a.m. 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 
11 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 0, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, Monday, 6, 10 p.m. Okay, so the clock is set. Let's see if we can record the announcement. I don't know where the microphone is. Testing one, two, three. Okay, that was not successful. Where is the microphone? I don't see any labeling. I don't see it on the bottom. Hmm. Okay, this is take two. Maybe you have to hold it down. Uh, oh yeah, that's what the instructions say. You know, sometimes when you read the instructions and you use something the way it was intended to be used, it works better. Okay, this is take two. Maybe you have to hold it down. Uh, oh yeah, that's what the instructions say. You know, sometimes when you read the instructions and you use something the way it was intended to be used, it works better. Okay, so that appeared to work. Now we have to figure out how to delete the messages. Ah, uh, it's going to rewind again. Okay, it's got to rewind again. It doesn't indicate how they should be erased. You know what, I wonder if, if I, ah, oh, jeez. I wonder if I switch these two tapes, because now this one has a, has the beep on it. Maybe it would just consider that to be one message. Hello 
there. So you guys got a nice surprise at the service today. This is Sarah. Give me a call when you get home. Bye-bye. Does this have a message on here I've never heard before? I didn't think it did. Now these were the tapes from the 5600 and I know I've, I've either played or listened to or both all of the messages that was in there. Okay. I'll just rewind it and see if it'll rec maybe it just records over it. I'm gonna change this down to uh, two rings. Okay, it's almost done with the rewinding. Now it says zero. Okay, so I think it does just record over them. Alright, let's call this thing up. It's got a nice ring to it. This is the first testing message into the AT&T 1618. It thus far it seems to be working. back. This is the first testing message into the AT&T 1618 and thus far it seems to be working. Monday 6.23 p.m. End of messages. Okay, so now I think if I call it again and I record, it'll just start, if I leave it where it is, it'll just record a second one next on the tape. Testing number two, over and out. Okay, now we got two messages. This is the first testing message. 
passage into the AT&T 1618, and thus far it seems to be working. Monday, 6.23 p.m. Testing number two. Over and out. Monday, 6.25 p.m. End of messages. Okay, now I'll call it with the call screening on so we can hear what it does with the date and time. when you read the instructions and you use something the way it was intended to be used, it works better. This is going to be a feedback freak show from the AT&T 210 telephone. Actually, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so that's working. Seems to be working quite nicely, too. And now, I guess to erase the messages, we just do a rewind. Okay. So that works pretty good. Now, let's test the telephone aspect of it. Get the microphone out here. Make an outside call. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Seems to be working just fine. Let's go back over to the testing answering machine and we'll record a testing message into it. One new message and twelve old messages. Message one. This is the official testing message from the AT&T 1816. Now, in the side tone, it sounds like it's kind of overloaded, so we'll have to see if, if it is, in fact, distorted or if it's clear. End of messages. That was quite clear. So, overall, it seems like it's working great. The microphone just fell. Okay. Anyways, the uh, phone is working correctly and the answering machine is working correctly. So this just needs a little bit of cleaning and it's ready to be put into service.